Hey guys, just for second reality here with the eighth episode of the Remnant tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be setting up her weapon animation. So basically, we'll be able to set our animations for idle and upper body and lower body movements and aiming and reloads later on in the tutorial, at least for the reloads per weapon in our data table. And that will be fed into our animation blueprints and automatically setting our animations to when we switch our weapons. So without further ado, we will get into that. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go to our blueprints, data, structures, and weapon animations. We're gonna need a couple more variables, something these some movement. Um, it's just gonna be a temporarily variable, I think because I might find a better way to do this but we need an, our upper body jog animation which will be our basically our arm movement for when we're jogging rather than just play we could play the idle but we want some arm but the idle doesn't have the arm sway back and forth so let's allow that and we can't just and we can't just plug it in plug in this the uh animation into our animation blueprint because when we switch to a pistol then it won't be it'll be playing the upper body rifle movement basically so with this we can now use upper body hand movements uh, and then we want aimed lower body movements this will allow us to set our blend space for lower body aimed animations, which is our slow walking we made uh, in our last episode, I believe. So now we have all this. I believe that is everything, just double checking. Yep. So now we have these made. Save all. That's being weapon animations are in here, remember? So that's set up per weapon. And finally, we actually set that in our data table. So a rifle forward jog. And if you didn't rename it, it's this animation from ALS version 4. So we just want the upper body movement since we have a jog lower body. Um. We don't need to do really do directional because we're our upper body mainly stays forward facing forward when we're moving directionally. Um, now that we have that done, and I've explained a little bit about it. We want to go to our yeah our data table and open up our weapon data table, and we want to set our animations. Apparently, I set them from when I was I actually re recorded this video already and then thought of a, a change, so I decided it would be better to literally restart it. So we're just going to clear out these animations so I can show you putting them back in, which is not really something. So I'm just going to battle rifle down the upper body jog animation that I just showed you. And this is the PS jog. And this is rifle aimed movement. And the reason we don't name this rifle movement is because our jog leg movement is also going to be used in other anim other uh, animations. And our aim, rifle aimed, and that should be it for setting our rifle animations. Now that we have our animations set, we actually want to send those animations somewhere to be used. So we're going to do that by going into our master, our animation blueprint. And in the update, in the event graph, I'm actually going to create a new graph called update graph. I like to organize my main function, my main events into their own graphs, especially when they have a lot of stuff. So I, I just click control X to copy and delete that at the same time. 
and control V to paste it in. So now we have our update event in our update graph. We want to get our character reference. Check for our currently equipped weapon, which could be our primary, secondary, or weapon, or melee weapon, which we don't have actually set up yet, but we will be setting it up in, in the future. So we will be basically, right now it's just set to the prime as the primary. So we want to get our equipped up in weapon data. And from here we want to break this so we can get access to all of our weapon. Now we have access to everything to do with our weapon in our animation blueprint. And we want to promote our animation details to a variable. And basically that allows us to oops, get our animations in here. So basically when you open this, you'll see now we have access to all of our animations and these are filled in when we load the game. Our equipped, it'll get the animations for our equipped weapon and it'll fill these variables to be used in our animation states. But one more thing we're gonna wanna do is when the game loads up, or it doesn't actually spawn our weapon instantly. There's a, it's it, there's like four or five frames that play before our weapon spawns. And I can actually, I'm pretty sure I can just show you that now. Yeah. You notice that all of a sudden we're getting errors. It's on our tick. But if you notice that it's still spamming through, it should be giving us, technically giving us the error. But it, if the... The way it works is in our blueprint character, master character. When this character is spawned, it spawns the weapons, but there's four or five ticks that happen before it gets for, before this event runs. But this is still it's still running through this. So basically we just want to check if our weapon is valid. And if it is valid, we will run through here. And if it's not valid, it will wait until it's valid for those few ticks. So that will prevent it from trading that uh, error. So now we click play. I click end, there's no more error that pops up. This is, a, this is pretty useful for other things too. It's because uh, there's all those instances you're going to want to check if something's valid because it's not going to spawn in at the exact moment that the code is running or when something's running on tick so you want to wait till it's valid i'm actually going to collapse this node that's going to be our weapon data space there open up our weapon data that so we know what it's doing we actually want to plug this in so now we have this collapsed graph here and we can actually get through it but we don't want to pass it too much through here because it's not going to get to the output unless it runs through unless it runs the checks if the valid is possible um, we can actually simply do this and it will just continue on through if it's not valid. So that if we did happen to put something after this right here, it won't wait until the weapon is valid to play it. So then we have this. One more thing, and I'll collapse that right at this moment. Now we have this done. We have our animations are being set up in here. We want to go to our anagraph.
And in here, we'll go to idle. We'll get our, we'll rename our animation details to weapon animations. Drag that out, compile. And we'll break this. That gives us access to our weapon animations here. We want to click the binding on our sequence and expose the pins. So we have our idle rifle down and our aimed idle. And if you notice that when I refresh this now, it's playing these animations. But the reason that it's T-posing in here is because we didn't spawn the weapons, which sets the references for the animations. So in order for it to play in the graph before things are running, we can just set some default values. Simply like that. And now our character has some animations. Uh, jog. Now it's just default animations. Say we equipped our pistol. Pistol. These will all be overridden to the pistol animations from our data table, since that how this that's how this works. Set that like that. Now I want to go back to our locomotion and we'll go to jog. I'm going to do the same thing here. Get our weapon. Break. And I'm actually going to copy this and paste it down here. So for our rifle aimed movement. This is our base pose, which would be our lower body. You notice we can't plug it in, but if we open this up, we can expose it as a pin and boom looks like that she's plugged in uh now we want a rifle aimed exposed and i believe that is just this animation right here for a rifle aim um down here we want our bs jog we'll expose it as a pin and that's just our movement animation and this is the one right here that we created a specific one here for that we might not keep there. The reason we do this is because we want to be able to set our upper body animation because say if we oops if I were to keep this like this it's gonna and I were to cook the pistol and I was to unaim it would play the um upper body jog shoulder shrugging animation for the upper body and we want to be able to set our pistols if we were a pistol per weapon so we want to expose this plug it in here so now only when we're equipping a weapon we'll do that animation but we have a pistol we'll, we'll use another animation uh yeah i think that's actually it for this sprint We can actually, no, no, I, I didn't add it before, but we can go sprint. Put that up here. No, uh, I don't want to set that there. Make sure these are all defaulted in the stru weapon structures. That's the our data table. Now we have a sprint being set for weapon and we in our pistol we can set our all of our own pistol animations so we want different animations for our pistol different animations for our knife they'll all automatically be fed in here get our weapon animations break here we go and grab our sprint oh. expose this pin for our blend space Grab our sprint and plug it in. Now it will play the whatever set on the weapon in the data table for our sprint. And simple as that, we have our animation set up 
per weapon. And any more animations, you can always add more to this, extend them, change them up the way you want, and run them into our data table. Everything should be working just fine. Yep, our sprint is being come is coming from our data table. Okay. And that will be everything for this episode. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Help me out a lot. And it'll also help you out by allowing you not to miss any videos because you'll get notified. I think that's pretty useful. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, feel free to leave those in the comments section below. Or join my Discord server using the link in the description. Thank you guys, and I will see you all in the next episode.